Bernard, I want to have a word with you about Professor Marriott's article. Yes, I think it's about time we reform local government. Do you, Bernard? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> At least I think I did. <laughs> uh, that is, I'm not wholly against it. <laughs> Although there are many uh, convincing, uh, some might say conclusive, arguments against it. Some might indeed, Bernard. <laughs> yes. Why? Because, Bernard, once you create genuinely democratic local communities, it won't stop there. Won't it? Well, of course it won't. You see, once they get established, they'll insist on more power. And the politicians will be too frightened to withhold them, so you'll get regional government. Uh, would that matter? Bernard's going to sit down. <laughs> Well, and what happens at the moment if there is some vacant land in, say, Nottingham, and there are rival proposals for its use, you know, a hospital, a college, or an airport? Well, we set up an interdepartmental committee, Department of Health, Department of Education, Department of Transport, Treasury, Environment, ask for papers, hold meetings, propose, discuss, revise, report back, redraft, normal thing. Precisely. Months of fruitful work. <laughs> Leading to a mature and responsible conclusion. But if you have regional government, they decide it all in Nottingham. Probably in a couple of meetings, complete amateurs. <laughs> it is their city. And what happens to us? Well, much less work. Yes, much less work. So little that ministers might almost be able to do it on their own. So we'd have much less power. Well, I don't know whether I really want power. Bernard. If the right people don't have power, do you know what happens? The wrong people get it. <laughs> Politicians, councillors, ordinary voters. But aren't they supposed to in a democracy? This is a British democracy. <laughs> How do you mean? British democracy recognises that you need a system to protect the important things of life and keep them out of the hands of the barbarians. <laughs> Things like the opera. <laughs> Radio 3. <laughs> the countryside. The law. The universities. Both of them. <laughs> and we are that system. Gosh. We run a civilised, aristocratic government machine tempered by occasional general elections. <laughs> Since 1832, we have been gradually excluding the voter from government. Now, we've got them to a point where they just vote once every five years for which bunch of buffoons will try to interfere with our policies, and you are happy to see all that thrown away. Uh, well, uh, no, 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 I, I didn't mean... Uh, but Bernard, do you want the Lake District turned into a gigantic caravan site? The Royal Opera House into a bingo hall. <laughs> The National Theatre into a carpet sale warehouse. Well, it looks like one, actually. <laughs> we gave the architect a knighthood so that nobody would ever say that. <laughs> Do you want Radio 3 to broadcast pop music 24 hours a day? And how would you feel if they took all the culture programmes off television? I don't know. I never watch them. Well, neither do I, but it's vital to know that they're there. <laughs> but you always said local government was corrupt and incompetent. Well, so it is, Bernard. So corrupt and incompetent that even ministers recognise it. Which means that they centralise. They give all the responsible jobs to us. We are the flower of government, Bernard. Local government may be a dunghill, <laughs> but it grows beautiful roses. <laughs> you, you mean... Uh... Yes, that's right, then. <laughs> but if we try to clean up the dunghill and lose our balance, we land in the... <laughs> <laughs> 